Will let go of the necklace. The weight dropped and was caught by the chain of the memories. He felt the chain pull against his neck. Right then the phone rang. It was as though Bella had come back and screamed in his ear. He snapped out of his reverie, apologized to Inga, and left her on the porch for a moment. It was Helen calling. Someone had evidently made it past the two front doors to her building, one of which never closed all the way unless you pulled it shut behind you, and kicked through her front door. They had stolen a few things, a camera, a sack of weed, and her wallet, which luckily had no cash in it, made a general mess of things. She was crying, and he tried to talk her down over the phone. The most disturbing thing was the drywall that had been peeled off with a broken lock hanging from the door. Nothing horribly valued had been stolen except peace of mind. He asked her whether she thought someone in the building had broken in, but she knew everyone in the building and only a man who used to live below her and might have kept copies of front door keys crossed her mind. An overweight television junkie whose wife slaved for him children cowered to him. I'll be right over, Will said. Lizard was busy with the brunette, so Will called Inga a cab and gave her a kiss and a hug, some cash that he had, then quickly walked toward Helen's place. Part of this route he used to walk when he and Cass were hot and heavy, south down California, under the metro tracks, into a flood of broken glass in the shade of the bridge where the gangbangers flung their empty forties, then east toward Milwaukee before he reached Humboldt Park. He always had walked to Cass's apartment with a passion, always left late in the night or early in the day, reconciling another fight they had in his head. Three out of four times he left, slammed the door behind him. She would run out on the porch, lean her head over the railing, and bitch at him some more. He never looked back, walked through the broken glass. The architecture on the northeast side of Humboldt Park was glorious. Time and air pollution had yellowed the column work and relief of the larger buildings, but the fire clay finish held the sheen like marble. People stood outside their houses tonight on the windswept streets many with Puerto Rican or American flags wrapped around them to keep warm in the night air. Fireworks were popping near and far. Kind of made sense that thieves were out, what with the commotion and noise. Will had trouble falling asleep that night, Helen beside him. He felt that old anxiety creeping back, the kind he had since Bella passed away. He went to the bathroom and splashed warm water on his face. When he finally fell asleep, he dreamt of two figures, a girl and a man between them along the banister. The man began to chant, falling, falling, very calm and slowly, and did something with his hands that Will couldn't quite remember. The banister gave way to their bodies, leaning forward and Fear struck him for surely they'd be injured in the fall, maybe punctured by the chandelier. He had no faith in this man standing beside him. Then his mind gave him great fortitude and the power to slow their motion, and the fall became a series of parallel yet nuanced body revolutions, and they could land any way they pleased. The two figures then disappeared. He woke to the sound of the doorbell, saw flashes of light on the ceiling.